wanted to learn how to lighten the color of your timber, either inside your house or on your furniture, well, in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you a really simple method to learn how to whitewash and lighten the color of your timber. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jade, and I'm here to teach you everything there is to know about DIY and flipping furniture. Let's dive into the video and learn how to lighten timber furniture. To create our whitewash, we're gonna need a few basic supplies. Let's go through what we're going to need. Now, first up, you're going to need some white paint. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? But it doesn't really matter what kind of white paint you have. Whether you have some acrylic white paint or latex paint that you've got from a hardware store, whether you've got some mineral paint or chalk paint if you're using furniture paint, it really doesn't matter what paint you use as long as it is a water-based paint because we don't want to be adding water to an oil-based product. So once you've got your white paint, like I said, doesn't matter what it is, you're just going to open your paint. I'm going to need to get myself a screwdriver because that's way too hard to open. The other products that you're going to need is simply some plain water, a paintbrush, and then a clean microfiber cloth. You're also going to need a little container. I like to use these containers that are little lunch containers, but it really doesn't matter what you use. You can also use plastic trays, or if you've got something else that you can put a little bit of paint in and mix it, that is perfectly good. So you're going to take your white paint and then you're going to apply that into your container. Now, I like to make a liberal amount of whitewash because it's really hard to get the consistency between the paint and water right if you're trying to make the same consistency later. So you wanna to make too much of the whitewash and have excess left over rather than run out and not have enough. So you're going to tip the paint into the container Oh, I'm doing quite a large surface here. I'm going to be whitewashing this entire tabletop. So I have applied quite a fair bit of paint into this container. I'm then going to take my water and I'm going to tip a fair bit of water into this container. Now you can measure out the consistency if you want to. I usually like to sort of work on a consistency of one quarter paint to three quarters water. If I'm going to be doing a light whitewash, I'm wanting to make a fairly heavy whitewash on this particular table. So I'm going to be making this a little bit stronger. I'm then just going to take my paintbrush and start to mix my whitewash. You'll see here that as I'm mixing it, the paint and the water kind of start to dissolve together. It does take a little bit of time and you need to keep mixing until the water is fully dissolved in the paint. There's no chunky bits and you're just mixing that all together nicely. It does take a little while to mix this together. Try not to splash it outside your container, but keep going until you've got a really nice consistency between your paint and your water. You can always easily add more water if you feel like you need to add more water to that consistency, or alternatively, you can add a little bit more paint if you feel like you're going to need more paint. You're going to end up with a really runny consistency by the time you are finished because it is going to be majority water with a little bit of paint, or in my case, this is sort of about half paint, half water. But you'll see here, it's not like paint, it's a really runny consistency. Once you've got your whitewash prepared and you are happy with it, you're going to start applying that to the tabletop or the timber, whatever it is that you're working with. You're simply going to paint this on, like as if you were painting paint on, and then once you have applied it to the area that you're wanting to lighten, you're then going to take the rag or the microfiber cloth that you have and wipe away any excess that you have there. Now you need to work reasonably quickly when you're whitewashing because you do want to make sure you don't have any paintbrush strokes in that when you are working with it. So I like to paint on a section and then remove that straight away. I then move on to the next section. So I'm just working through making sure I get all of the timber sections. It will be fairly obvious where you haven't applied the whitewash. And then as soon as you do that section, you're going to wipe away the excess.
and keep moving on. You ideally want to do this on a day that is not too hot. If you're working in a really hot temperature, it is going to be a little bit more difficult for you to wipe away that excess before it dries. In fact, if you're working on a really hot day, say above 25 degrees, you are going to then be like really racing against the clock to get your whitewash on and wiped off before it goes too hard. You want to work reasonably quickly because the idea is that we blend it together before we have really obvious lines. So we're just going to continue this same process along the table and then I'm going to continue along this way from where I started and try and blend that together as I'm working. As I sort of mentioned before, this is a fairly strong paint whitewash consistency. You'll see there that that particular section almost dried before I wiped off the excess. So I do need to work really quickly when I am doing this. Now I'll show you the difference between what the colour of the timber looks like after I've applied the whitewash and then what the colour of the raw natural pine looks like. You'll be able to see quite an obvious difference there. So once I finish that first section, I'm then going to move on to the next section and try and work blending that together with the previous section that I have done. Like I said, you do ideally want to do this a little bit quicker than, quicker than what I'm doing it here. I am making a video of it, so it's a little bit harder to do very quickly, but when I'm doing this normally, I will just work very quickly through each section and blend them together as fast as I can to try and remove that possibility of having a join line. You'll notice in the middle there, there's the potential that you could have a join line where you have join those two colours together. So try and really rub hard over that section where you've joined the two sections together. It could also be useful to go the whole direction now to the end. In fact, I might actually do that, go all the way up to the end. So then I'm only going to have those two join lines You'll see there that that's drying as I'm working. So I just need to make sure that I'm wiping away that excess and not letting it dry with those paintbrush strokes in that there. If you happen to drip any on the table, like I just did there, or on the surface that you're working with, just wipe off that excess straight away. It's not really being my friend there. So painting it on and wiping off that excess. Trying to wipe in the direction of your wood grain, you'll see here that the grains of my timber are going this way. So ideally, I would not want to be painting my whitewash on in this direction. I want to be working with the way the wood grain is going. Doesn't matter what timber I'm working with. Um, I am working with pine right now, and pine typically does have a very yellow kind of consistency to it. Um, sometimes it even turns out white orange once you apply the top coat. So a lot of the time when I'm working with pine, especially when I'm creating a coastal piece like I am here, 
I'm going to lighten that timber and just try and take those yellow tones out of the timber a little bit. There's many different ways that you can lighten timber. You can easily lighten timber with multiple different methods. You can bleach your timber to lighten your timber with a bleach. You can use a liming white uh, varnish and stain that's an all-in-one that you can buy from the hardware store. Or you can do as I'm doing here and apply a whitewash. If you don't want to use white paint, you can also do this exact same process and technique with a cream or a tan colour um, and then you can just do a slightly warmer paint wash than the white if you're really not wanting that stark white colour. It's really up to you what you want to create. You know, you can create anything that you really want. It's amazing all the opportunities that you have available to you. I, on this particular piece of furniture, also have a timber edging that I'm going to be doing my whitewash on to blend it into the top here. I do find that a lot of people ask the question, you know, how do you whitewash without having marks or lines or where it absorbs differently? When you're doing a whitewash, it's a little bit tricky to apply a wood conditioner first because the idea of our whitewash is that we are letting the paint and water soak into our timber. You can apply a wood conditioner to try and get that to absorb on a better, sort of more even level. But once you learn how to do a whitewash, you'll find that you, will, you won't really need to do that and that you can apply your whitewash and get a really nice even consistency. And I will now show you what that looks like. This is the end result after I have whitewashed the entire top of this timber table. Looking up close, it is looking really good. We will go a little bit closer and have a look at where the join was. You will be able to see that there is a little bit of an imperfection where I have joined the two sections together. This is because I was working a little bit slower. However, if you work through the process quickly, you'll be able to remove this and have a smooth, consistent look throughout. For this particular table, I also applied a whitewash to this timber strip. I wanted to have the timber strip raw and matching because I really like having a little bit of extra detail in my pieces. If you would like to go deeper on the process of lightening timber, either learning a little bit more about this particular whitewashing process I'm using or the other ways that you can lighten timber, I have a free whitewashing and lightening your timber guide down in the description. Now, because we're dealing with a timber product, we do need to apply a top coat. The whitewash timber is not going to be very hard or durable, and we need to make sure that we apply a top coat to protect this timber. I'm using a clear polycrylic top coat here and applying it with a top coat sponge. There's lots of different top coats available to you, and you can select which one is going to work best for your project. And here we are, the end result. A beautiful, light, bright, coastal inspired piece. If you liked this whitewashing tutorial and you were a little bit curious about the full makeover of this coffee table, I do have a step-by-step -step video where I showcase the entire transformation of this coffee table that you can check out here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.